Welcome to the Candidates Forum, featuring four, featuring four candidates for the Three Oaks Village Board. Uh, Steve Graciano, Nick Flex, Colleen Newquist, and Becky Thomas. Four of the six candidates that will compete on November 6th for three of the six board vacancies on the Three Oaks Village Board. John Kramer declined our invitation to participate, and Dustin Blazek sent word this afternoon that he had become ill. My name is John Ripley, and I am the co-chair of the League of Women Voters of Berrien and Cass County's Voter Service Committee, the sponsor of tonight's event. Our special thanks go to the Three Oaks Elementary School for allowing us to use their facilities and to the American Academy of Music for sharing their sound system with us. Finally, I want to thank the League members who made this event possible and those working here tonight. You can see that we are videotaping tonight's event and it will be broadcast on our League's YouTube channel as soon as we can get it posted for you and those who could not attend tonight to see it. The citizens of Three Oaks have certainly learned that good government does not just happen. Citizens have a responsibility to choose their elected officials wisely, and these officials in turn are expected to consider the common good of the entire community in all their deliberations and decisions. The League of Women Voters is proud to be a support group in this process. All across America, at the local, state, and national levels, the League is the one nonpartisan organization that consistently works to promote good government and to encourage citizens to become informed and vote. We invite you to join us. We will begin the program this evening with a two-minute presentation from each candidate. Once the opening remarks are concluded, I will ask the candidates questions prepared by the League. The candidates will have a set amount of time, usually one minute, to answer each question. They have not seen the questions in advance. After the League's questions, you in the audience will have the opportunity to ask questions of the candidates. You have been, or you will be, given cards on which you may write any pertinent question you may have for the candidates. Please write your questions legibly and briefly. They should be questions, not statements, and deal with issues. You may direct your questions to one or all of the candidates. One question per card, please. The questions will be reviewed for relevance and duplication before putting them to the candidate or candidates. If you don't have a card, but you wish one, please raise your hand now. League members will be picking up cards during the forum, so just signal to them that you have a question card ready. At the conclusion of the question, each candidate will give a two-minute concluding statement. Our timers for this evening are League members Christiana Zilke and Marilyn Clowder here in the front. They will hold up a paddle to alert our panelists when they have 15 seconds left and, and when time is up. It is very important that the audience please refrain from any demonstrations of enthusiasm for candidates or their answers to any questions. We can give them all a huge round of applause at the end, as indeed anyone willing to run for office and serve deserves our thanks. This is a nonpartisan election. All candidates are running without party affiliation. However, for our purposes tonight, we will operate using the highly scientific and nonpartisan principle of alphabetical order and then variations thereof. So for the opening statements, we will begin, begin with Mr. Graziano, then Mr. LaFlex, then Ms. Nukas, and finally Ms. Thomas. Uh, Mr. Graziano.
Is this testing? Can you hear me? All right. Don't start my timer yet. I'm a little nervous. I have two and a half minutes, so I have to go into Italian mode and speak a little faster so I can do that. My problem is I'm going to hold this mic so I can't. All right, I'd like to welcome everybody tonight and say thank you for attending this public forum. I would like to introduce myself tonight. My name is Steve Graziano. I'm a lifelong member of this great community of Three Oaks. I have four kids and an amazing wife, Teresa, of 20 years. I'm currently an eighth grade history teacher at Lakeshore Public Schools, and I also own my own business, Mr. G's Driving School. I was first elected in 2008 when Three Oaks wasn't the same village it was today. We actually started in the same room in here 10 years ago with the same process. Unfortunately, Three Oaks was in bad shape 10 years ago. How bad was it? Well, some people in this room, including fellow candidates, may not remember how bad it was because some of them were not even living here in Three Oaks at the time. We were in the process of a state takeover. We were assigned an emergency manager by the governor. We were so broke, we were worried about making payroll and paying our bills. We were so broke, we had to sell Watkins Park to keep afloat. Now, don't get too nervous, we bought it back. Still, we own it. But that was what we were put in a position to do. Our streets were terrible shape. We had worked hard in the last 10 years to fix the roads. We have paved 95% of our streets since 2009. We have guided Three Oaks out of that situation and we've made Three Oaks into one of Southwest Michigan's gems. I think the topic on everybody's mind is the sewer ponds and distillery. I would like to make my position very clear on this topic. We are blessed to have journeymen in Three Oaks. Journeymen is one of many reasons Three Oaks is great. I want journeymen to stay and continue to grow in Three Oaks. I think we can do a better job working together though and finding solutions that work for everyone in Three Oaks. But it's important that we find an equitable solution for our sewer ponds. If I'm reelected, that will be my primary, primary goal day one, finding a proportional financial solution for everyone in Three Oaks. My fellow candidates have said numerous times our businesses and second homeowners are underrepresented. I'm not sure I agree with that statement. I'm not sure I agree with that statement because if elected, I will represent all members of this community, including the business owners, second homeowners, and especially the core of this community, the residents. And I guess I didn't speak fast enough, so I'll have to say that. Thank you, Mr. Graziano. Uh, Mr. LaFlex. Uh, good evening. My name is Nick LaFlex. Um, I wanted to thank the League for inviting us here this evening for this wonderful event. Um, so I am not originally from Three Oaks. I've been a resident of Southwest Michigan for 20 plus years. Um, I actually attended Lakeshore High School. Um, I've been in the village now for seven years. Um, I also work in the craft beverage industry. Um, I work for Marsh Hospitality Group, which is Round Barn Winery, Taper Hill Winery, and Three Run Cellars. Um, I've been with them for on and off nine years. Um, I've been an HR director for them for the past three. Um, I'm now working in business development. I just built their private events division, launched that this year as the private events director. And I'm also um, overseeing the Tabor Hill location as their general manager and helped with the acquisition this last year. Um, so. As Mr. Graziano said, um, we have definitely uh, made it one of our priorities to include everyone in the village in the conversation. Um, I do believe that the business owners and the transplants are um, largely left out of the conversation, um, especially when it comes to the village politics. Um, because I wasn't born here, um, I don't really think that speaks anything about my dedication to this town. Um, I chose to be here. Um, it is my chosen home. And I love this village just as anyone else would. Um, so as far as the journeyman issue goes, um, the ponds are definitely on top of mind for everyone. Um, I am really pushing to encourage um, the current council who will be making a decision by the end of the month. Um, to go with a forward-thinking strategic plan to set us up for success in the future so that our village can continue to flourish and grow. Uh, thank you, Mr. LaFlex. Uh, <coughs> Ms. Newquist. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming tonight. Thanks to the League for sponsoring this forum. So I've been asked many times during the course of this campaign why I'm running for Village Council. And truthfully, there are many other ways I could and at times would like to be spending my time. 
I'm a communications consultant, a writer, an artist, most recently a shopkeeper. I'm a mother, a wife, a friend. I serve on the Downtown Development Authority and on the board of Radio Harbor Country. I have no end of ways to spend my time, but I'm here because I think it's important. It's important that all the people of our village are well represented by our council. Longtime residents, transplants such as myself, second homeowners, business owners, property owners, all the people who pay taxes, and more importantly, all the people who love Three Oaks. Everyone deserves to have their voices heard. And contrary to what Steve said, I don't believe that has been the case. I don't think the current council has been listening. It's important that we anticipate and plan for issues that will come, and they will come as this entire area continues to grow in popularity. That in seeking solutions, especially major issues like the sewage ponds, we look at the big picture, assess the impact and consequences, gather all the info, consider all the constituents before making decisions. It's important that we not base decisions on hearsay or on made up numbers. And Steve, I'm glad you've changed tune on that. It's important that we as a village proactively communicate with our citizens and involve them in the decision making. So I'm here because I care about Three Oaks. And you're here because you care about Three Oaks too. So I really hope that we have the opportunity to work together in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nicholas. And finally, Ms. Thomas. <coughs> Uh, hi, I'm Becky Thomas. Um, I want to thank the League of Women, Women Voters for hosting this evening. Um, I've been coming to this area since 1987. Uh, my family moved here in 1990 to, uh, to open a business in Union Pier and they started Sweet Haven Resort. In 2003, I decided it was time for me to make my move too. Um, after moving here, I've worked for many small, local, family-owned service industry businesses that our area knows and loves and frequents. Um, volunteering for many events at the Acorn Theater, I began, I began my love for Three Oaks. Um, and, and it led me to a full-time management position at the Acorn. Um, since moving here in 2007, I have served on the Three Oaks Business Association Board and the Harbor Country Chamber Board. I have volunteered for numerous committees, including the Harbor T Country Guide, uh, Harbor Country Ch Chocolate Classic, and the Harvest Days. Um, I have also volunteered for many Three Oaks fun functions, such as Inside Out Festival, Horse Fest, and Music in the Park. I love Three Oaks. Um, Three Oaks is a small town charm, and I'm proud to call Three Oaks my home. I believe in, in transparency and having an educated public. I believe in accountability of our village council. I believe in one village for all residents, businesses, and second homeowners as we're all in this together. Um, I have always been a doer to make the impossible possible. My daily job as a property management manager is to manage challenges within my communities. Um, looking to the future, I'm very excited at where this village is today. We have a great opportunity to shape our future while embracing our history and small town charm. Change and growth is inevitable. We as a community need to do this together. Uh, we have a clear vision in order to move into the future. We need to make a plan for economic de development in our area and we need our residents involved in the life we all want our village to, to go. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now we will start with the individual questions. Uh, first question uh, goes to Mr. Graciano, and the question is, <coughs> in one or two words, what do you think is Three Oaks' greatest asset? One or two words? <laughs> it's people. Sense of community. Just echoing what they said, definitely the people and the community. I, yeah. 
We're all we're all here for each other. So it is our community and our family. Our family. Uh, the next question uh, goes to Ms. Thomas, and it is uh, this. In, in the past few years, the village has experienced considerable economic growth. As a village trustee, would you encourage this type of development? I would encourage it. Um, I would encourage it, but making sure that it is right for the village. I mean, we can't just have, I don't know how to put it into words, I'm sorry. Um, we need the right economic growth. We need the right industry here. Uh, Ms. Newquist. Well, I think it's important to think about the difference between growth and investment. So we need to continue to invest in our economic development. That doesn't necessarily mean that we need the village to get bigger or have more people. I mean, it's like if you think about economic development and that it's really a combination of having businesses, having the people, having affordable housing for everyone, you know, places for people to work. I'm sorry, is that a stop? We're having a timing issue. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. The answers are within 15 seconds. I know one minute. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, my short answer is that I am in favor of continued economic investment in the village and that we need to consider all of the aspects as we plan for that. Um, I would definitely encourage economic development um, in the future of the village. Um, as Colleen said, it doesn't necessarily mean growing it um, by bringing in more people, um, but I think the more money that you have in the village, the more there is to spread around. Um, I think once you start widening that pool, um, we're able to provide more for our own residents, um, so that means better infrastructure. That means being able to bring in more housing developments. Um, I know affordable housing is one of the issues that the current council president, Dave Gross, has brought up numerous times. Um, I think in order to do that, we have to have the infrastructure in place first. Um, so I definitely think that economic development for the village is a very important thing. Um, but Actually, that's something I'd like to know the answer to. And one of my current issues is that we're in the, the village is in the process of updating the master plan, and the village board is planning to come up with a resolution to the sewage system issue by the end of October before we have the updated master plan. And I feel like those two things ought to go together. There's the master plan survey that I hope all of you have answered because that is what informs the council as to what the biggest issue is in the village. So the biggest issue may be water, but I want the facts before I make that decision. And Mr. Graziano. Yeah, I think some of the candidates are confused. It's not a water problem, it's a sewer problem. We put a lot of money and effort into our water system. We've set money aside to replace water meters, which we're doing currently, because we planned that ahead of time. They went bad years before they were supposed to, the batteries. And also about facts. I think it's important because you just can't say something and it's true. The fact is, in 2011, because I, I have the report right in front of me, Pond 1 had six inches of sludge, Pond 2 had zero, Pond 3 had zero. It was 2011 this report was taken. So we gotta stop saying we've been neglecting this for 30 years. The ponds are going back right now. Since we've stopped discharging into them, they're starting to regenerate. That's how they've been designed to work. So we have to be careful in making accusations about mismanagement. Now for the next question, we will stop with Ms. Thomas. 
in a community of aging housing, do you feel code enforcement is adequate? I'm sorry, can you say that again? I just... Yes, in a community of aging housing, do you feel code enforcement is adequate? No, I don't think it's adequate. I mean, I think that we do have to, there is a better community. Um, I do think that code does have to be enforced. I think that, peop that um, we do have to keep our, home our homes uh, safe. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know a lot about construction and things like that, so it's hard for me to, uh, answer. Sorry. All right, uh, Mr. LaFlex. <laughs> yes, in a community of aging housing, do you feel code enforcement is adequate? Um, I feel like it is adequate if the codes are actually being followed. Um, I, I feel like there is. Um, there are some homes that do definitely need some upkeep in the village. Um, I know that uh, I know that the village does crack down on the long coat because I've gotten a friendly reminder in my mailbox. Um, but uh, I I definitely think um, we need to be doing a better job of keeping things up to code in the village because it's only going to help us all. Um, our property values drawing people to the community. Um, but I, I do think if we have the codes, we definitely need to enforce them, and that would be adequate. All right, Mr. Graziano. <coughs> That's a tough question to answer. All I know for a fact is our code enforcer works hard, he does a great job, and he does the best he can. And I think it's important, though, about trying to help our neighbors. And we've done that in the council. You know, like, hey, why don't we just get together, go to this person's house, help them out, pull together as a community and sometimes people need a little help and I think that's important to look at it as a community and what can we do to help each other. Uh, I do believe when it comes to safety that's very important and I do believe our code enforcer works hard to, uh, to, to hand those citations out but there is a, a lengthy legal process through it with warnings and its ordinances but you can always do it better. I mean I think it's a kind of loaded question. I just feel confident that our code enforcer is doing the best they can, and um, I'm satisfied with that. And Ms. Newquist? I don't know that our codes are being enforced as much as they should be, because there are a lot of houses in the village that definitely need some help. And I know that as a small village, we only have a code enforcement officer who works a couple of hours a week, which I think is probably standard for a village this size. Um, but what I would like to see is enforcement, but with a concerted plan, an actual plan, some way of helping people who can't afford to fix their houses or who are elderly and can't do it themselves or, you know, there are ways that we could um, develop some volunteer system like some towns do this. Um, it's sort of a time bank where someone volunteers and then that, um, they can withdraw that time. So maybe an elderly person drives someone to a medical appointment, but then someone else comes and fixes their windows that are broken. So my time is up, but I do think that we need to better enforce things. All right, the next question starts with Mr. Graziano. The question is this, would you be proactive in seeking developers for affordable and senior housing? Yes, I would support a council doing that. You know, the, the role of the council is we don't run this town. We, we run the manager and we select a manager that runs this town. So I would direct the manager to do that, which we have, and work hard and give them everything we can. And, and yes, I think that's important. That'd be a directive. But you've got to be careful uh, micromanaging. You know, I believe my job as village council is to run the manager and it's his job to run the, the village and that's definitely a top priority. I think affordable housing, senior housing is very important and that's something I think we're lacking. And I know uh, Village President Gross has talked a lot about that 
and he spearheads that, and that's something we're all behind. Mr. LaFleck? Um, I would definitely love to support that um, in the future once I believe that we have the infrastructure in place to support it. Um, I know that there was um, a VA hospital proposal um, that came to the village um, and we weren't able to support that. Um, the industrial park um, still has not been developed um, because they don't have the infrastructure for that. And I think before we look at expanding things, we need to actually get the systems in place to be able to do that um, and be able to sustain that. Um, we have things in the village right now that we can't sustain. Um, so I really think we need to look at the infrastructure first before we look at doing that. But affordable housing is definitely very important for the area. Um, it's great for the schools. Um, I think we need to be attracting younger couples with children as well um, to get the enrollment up in the schools. But to do all of that, I think we need to start at step one and start with the infrastructure. And Ms. Newquist? I think that we need to think about how to best manage affordable housing. We definitely need senior housing. I'd love to see a program that is like a seniors age in place kind of program, which a lot of villages have, which helps seniors stay in their own homes. Um, we definitely need places. I, I know that there are younger people who work in the village and they have a, a hard time finding places to live in the village not even just affordable, I think, just finding places to live. So I'd really like to see a study done to find out what do we have available right now. Um, we do also have an issue, like there's manufactured housing that, at the trailer park that is, I think, you know, could potentially be affordable housing, but from what I've heard is not, is not in great shape. So I think we need to pay attention to what we have now and figure how to make the most of it and how to best move forward. Ms. Towns. Um, I agree with uh, every answer that's been up here so far. Yes, we do need affordable housing. Um, and and it would be nice to have senior living also. Um, I know from my own experience with my daughter, she you know works at Journeyman, um, needed to, wanted to find a home closer to work and everything, and she's had a hard time look, looking within the village. So yes, we definitely do need um, to think about that, and we do need to have an infrastructure to support um, any any housing that comes to our village and township. Thank you. Uh, the next question uh, goes to Mr. Graciano, and this is the question. Many have observed that there are cultural issues facing our community that can be divisive. Is this an area that the council should address? I think you should always address it, but you should also live it. And the key is respect. Respect others. Respect your neighbor. Respect your neighbors down the street. Um, you know, just. You know, that's kind of what I've done my whole life as an educator, as a football coach, as a father, as a husband. You know, you lead by example. And I think what's important there is respect, respecting other people, respecting others, and that's so important. So I think, yes, the council could, and we do, um, through our actions and uh, just respecting other people. I have time left over, so I want to rebut to what was said earlier about the VA hospital. You must understand, <laughs> That's, that's a, such an incorrect statement about the VA hospital. We worked really hard, hours and hours, years and years. And it came down to a simple thing. It was three ultra South Bend, and they chose South Bend. Um, it was nothing in our control, it was a federal thing. And that goes back all the way to Pat Yoder, our village manager. They worked so hard. And I see other council members in the audience that could shake their head and verify that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Thomas. Can you repeat the question again? Yes, uh, many, have, uh, many have observed that there are cultural issues facing our community that can be divisive. Is this an area that the council should address? In any cultural issue, the council should address it. Um, 
I, that's all I have to say. I mean, it's it's just, that's just the basic of it. You, it does need to be addressed if if there are. All right, and uh, Ms. Newquist. It's definitely something the council should address, and I feel really strongly about this. That you know, I, I do sometimes feel that there's a divide in this town, and the only way to overcome it, I think, is to be really proactive and purposeful about <laughs> overcoming it. Yes, we need to respect one another, but we also need the council members to step foot in the shops downtown. We also need then the shop owners to be engaged in the flag day parade. I mean, we need, it goes both ways, and we need that to be encouraged, and we need to be purposeful, and the council can set the standard for that. Going off of what Ms. Newquist just said, um, I 100% agree. I definitely feel a divide in this town. Um, it's actually been picked up on this evening in the conversation up here with our panel. Um, I, th there is a definite divide between um, lifetime Oakers um, and Oakers who have been here not their whole life. Um, again, I, I want to reiterate, I think it's the council's duty to not perpetuate that um, and make sure that everyone is included. We're all in this together. We're all here. Um, we have chosen to be here. Um, and we are stepping up because we want to make this town as great as it can be. It's a great town. It's the gem of Harbor Country. So we are here to do that. Um, and I, I think we need to be respected for that as well. Um, I 100% I, I agree, it's about respect. All right, uh, what I'd like to do now is go to some of the questions from the audience. And uh, the first one, first one will go to Mr. Reflex, and that is, do you support legislation for the legalization of marijuana? And if so, are you in favor of dispensaries in Three Oaks? I am 100% in support of legalization. Um, I think the tax revenue that we could draw on that, hands down, would be a huge benefit. Um, it's money for the schools, it's money for the village. Um, I, I think we would be foolish not to allow that. Um, obviously, it's going to be heavily regulated, um, but I 100% I am in support of legalizing that and having dispensaries in the village. Um, I think we would greatly benefit from the tax tax revenue. Ms. Thomas? I agree. Um, I do support legalizing marijuana, and I do think that uh, having dispensaries in town for exactly what Nick said, tax benefits, and for, um, how, you know, brain just went dead, sorry. Uh, but yes, I do support it. I absolutely support the legalization <laughs> of marijuana. As far as dispensaries in the town, I think we should approach it as we would any other business in the town. That we should consider the impact, the consequences, that it should be thoughtful, that we should get residents' input, and that we should make a decision based on what the village of Three Oaks is in favor of, not what I think. I voted no for uh, dispensaries in the village. Uh, I will vote yes in November for the statewide, but again, I don't know right now if there's a proper place to put it in the village of Three Oaks. Now, I could change my mind if a business comes up with a plan, but um, right now, I, I just don't see a marijuana dispenser uh, something that we need in Three Oaks right now. Now, the township, because we're all township members also. I think the township may be, but right now I would say no, and I voted no uh, on the record for that to allow dispensaries in the village. But, like I said, I'm open-minded. If a business came to me with a plan, I'd look at it, and like Colleen said, to see what's best for three oaks. But uh, I think the answer to your question is no. The next question goes to Ms. Thomas, and that is, uh, it has been observed that community officials 
are not often present at community events. If elected, do you feel it would be your responsibility to attend community events? Absolutely. Um, I'm at pretty much all community events as just a resident of, of Three Oaks. Um, I volunteer, as you heard earlier, for a lot of them, and I participate in them. So yes, absolutely. Uh, Mr. LaFlex? I 100% agree. Um, I think if you're representing the village and you're a leader <coughs> in the village, um, you should definitely be present and engaged. Um, and again, that's part of the reason why I'm throwing my hat in the ring. I don't see that happening. Um, uh, there's a couple council members that I actually have seen before I started going to council meetings. Um, the rest of the council, I had no idea who they were. Um, I, I think it is their responsibility and it would be my responsibility as a council member to be involved in the community and make sure that I'm present when there are things going on um, and making myself available to residents if they have anything to talk to me about. Can you repeat the question, please? It has been observed that community officials are not often present at community events. If elected, do you feel it would be your responsibility to attend community events? I wasn't sure there was an attendance policy, but next time I'll make sure I wear a bright colored shirt so you can see me. Um, unfortunately, uh, I'd love to come as many events as I can. I can promise you I come to every event I was invited to, like tonight, and I appreciate the invitation. Um, I try to do everything I can to support, but unfortunately with four kids, a family, and two jobs, I do the best I can. Um, and I think it is important. I've been to many flag days, and I wish it could have been October F or Worst Fest this year. I think we had a sick kid or we're Teresa or something going on. It just things happen. And I've been to those Worst Fests. They're, they're a great time. Uh, but, I, but yes, I don't wear a big neon sign that says I'm a village council member. Um, I, like I said, so my job to run the town is to run the, ma the manager and just, I'm a, also a village resident. I think that's important. I do think it's important to go to village events. I mean, for one thing, it's fun. Um, but it is important, and I do think it is a responsibility as council members to reach out. One of the things I feel strongly about is improved communication between the council and the residents. I don't feel like residents should have to go seeking out information. And so, and that's just one way of doing it, is being available, being known, being a visible part of the community. I think it matters. Oh, thank you. Uh, the next question goes to Mr. Graziano, and it has to do with sidewalks. Uh, this this uh, person says that he or she knows that each homeowner is responsible for their own sidewalk and thinks this is not a good law and that sidewalks need to be redone by the village. What is your opinion on this? I can understand the point. Uh, and that's a tough one. You know, I, the, the ordinance says the ordinance says that they're responsible. Uh, I think that we do the best we can if we're doing a street. Um, and I don't know, again, I shouldn't speak on stuff you don't know, but I, I think there might be some legality issues of spending money for the village for uh, someone's sidewalk. But I, I think that's a valid point to discuss and talk about and try to help out. Uh, a resident that maybe can't afford to fix their sidewalks or help them in any way we can. So that's a tough one. I think it needs further thought. Uh, one thing I want to go back and rebuttal about community members. Uh, I am a member of the Masons. I am a son of Liberty or Sons of Legion member. I've been on the school board here. I've participated in a lot of organizations and volunteered a lot of time. So I guess that's the way I look at getting my face out in the community too. <coughs> yes. Um, if it has been observed that community officials are not present at community events. Should people be responsible for their sidewalks? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 
this person acknowledges that homeowners are responsible for their own sidewalks. And this person thinks that's, well, silly. And uh, a silly law, and sidewalks need to be redone by the village. Um, the sidewalks are an accident waiting to happen. What is your opinion on that? Um, my first question would be, who put in the sidewalk? Was it the village or was it the resident? Um, I, I don't think that if the village installed the sidewalk, the resident should have to be responsible for maintaining it. Um, I, I guess that would be the simple answer to that question. I'm really not sure. I need to look into this. I'm not sure um, why homeowners are responsible for the sidewalks. And uh, I do know that many of them are in terrible shape and that a lot of the streets actually, Poplar, which is right across from my house, doesn't have sidewalks. And one of the, if I'm not mistaken, the village lost the opportunity to have a senior development in the village. We didn't get a grant that was available because we were not considered a walkable village. And I personally think we are a walkable village, but I understand that sidewalks are part of that. So I think it's an issue worth, worth looking into. I honestly, I did not, didn't know about the ordinance and I would definitely have to get more information um, on it. I do know that when my street was done two, I believe it was two years ago, we did not have to, the village did take, did redo all of our sidewalks on our streets. So it, it's something to, to look into. The next question uh, comes from the audience. Uh, and uh, Mr. Graziano will be first. Um, the question is, who should pay for the sewer pond upgrades, the residents or business? But both is not an option. Well, I think if you look at our situation, I believe our sewer ponds can sustain our residents and uh, for the most part all our industries except for one it's one issue and I think that's something we need to talk about and we need to come up with a proportional uh, like a buy-in you know I think if we're going to do something for one industry which is off the table I think that maybe there should be a buy-in there should be a monetary amount of buy into the system because the real reason we would be doing anything is for one business. And so I think they uh, hold some responsibility, but also as a village, we're responsible too to providing services, but I'm also responsible to these citizens and making sure that they're not paying for something that they would have no use for because it's not needed. Uh, Ms. Thomas? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to have you re repeat the question. Yes. Um, who should pay for the sewer pond upgrades, the residents or businesses? But both is not an option. I don't believe that anybody is going to actually have to pay for the upgrades. I think with um, refinancing the bond, the current bond, that would be able to take care of, of the upgrades. Well, there are three options currently before the village about how to resolve this issue. And it goes from minimal treatment, not accepting any industrial waste, to a moderate treatment expansion with significant industrial user doing pre-treatment and, and paying part of that cost, and to a full build-out where it's that, you know, anyone can dump industrial waste and we'll be good to go. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's an odd question because I don't think it is an either or situation, but I think that, as Becky said, that there is a way to finance this by refinancing the current bond by getting a grant from um, the state, I believe it is. 
Um, but I encourage all of you, tomorrow night at the Village Board meeting, the firm that is working on this will be presenting the updated plan, and I think everyone should attend so that you can have all the information. Uh, yes, Mr. LaFlex, um, <coughs> who should pay for the sewer pond upgrades? The residents or businesses? But it can't be both. That's the question. Um, so I have gone over the financial audit and the financial statements. Um, my history in finance, I was a licensed financial advisor. Um, I was licensed through the SEC. Um, I also worked as the business manager for several years at my current employer. Um, I know how to read a spreadsheet. Um, I know how to look at balances. Um, I believe that, again, it's being pinned on a one business issue, um, which it is not. Uh, it, I mean, if, if that is going to be the song being sung, um, where was the due diligence when that was approved to come to the village? Um, so I, I do not think uh, that it needs to fall down to residents or businesses. Um, I think we need to have financial minds sit down and look at how we can structure this. We have a good cash flow coming into the village. Um, we can definitely refinance bonds. Um, and I think we need to broaden the conversation. All right, one, one more question. Uh, and this one goes to you, Mr. Lefort. First, um, and this is the other side of a question that we asked before, and this is some people do not want Three Oaks to grow any more than it has. How do you feel? Um, I definitely, I can see where that person is coming from. I mean, part of the draw for me personally coming to this village is it's a quiet, charming town. Um, I think we need to be uh, very strategic about the growth that we do allow. Um, I mean, I think part of the charm of this town is having small, quaint shops, not large chains. Um, I, I think we need to just be, um, we, we need to be very intentional in our decision making as we move forward. Um, I think we can definitely um, take a look at what what it is that we are looking to bring into the village and make strategic plans around that. Um, but as we mentioned earlier, change is inevitable. Um, change has been happening. Um, and, you know, again, the industrial part, I would love to see that developed um, and bring more revenue in. Uh, Ms. Thomas? Can you repeat the question again, please? Yes. Um, yes. Some people think that Three Oaks should not grow any more than it has. How do you feel? It has grown, and it's going to continue to grow. Um, you, can't, you can't stop uh, change, and you can't stop um, you can't stop people from coming here and wanting to, to live here or, you know, work here. It's just inevitable that this is going to happen. Um, agreed with Nick and anybody else that we do have to manage um, how, how the change comes and how we can make the growing pains a little easier. Um, Ms. Newquist? <coughs> I think it is just so important that we manage the change, that we manage growth, that we, this is the importance of the master plan and of getting everyone's input. Um, I do think that, you know, we have a good balance here and that I think everyone here is interested in keeping that balance. I mean, with all due respect to New Buffalo, Nobody really wants to be in New Buffalo, where there's such an emphasis on tourism. At the same time, with all due respect to Galeen, we don't want to be Galeen with empty storefronts. We've got a good thing going, but we need to be proactive to manage that so that it doesn't get good out of control one way or the other. And Mr. Graziano. 
I'm going to go quick with this one because I have some other things I want to talk about that was mentioned. I, I think it's not growth outward, it's within is what I think is important. And so maybe this person, and I could agree, you don't want to grow outwards and be bigger, but you want to get better. You want to go from good to great. I think Thrillix is going to do that. You're always going to grow. And if you're not growing, then I guess you're dying. No, it's just staying the same. But we're going to always grow. Uh, we're always going to grow. Now, going back to what was said about this bond issue, you need to understand some facts here. Getting a mortgage for your house is different than getting a mortgage or a bond for a sewer project. Okay, It's not the same. And just because it sounds great. And so I'm not an expert. I know I'm not. So we, we contacted our attorney. That was our bond attorney for our last attorney. And I just got this today, so no one else would have this information. We'll probably talk about it tomorrow. Uh, he informed us it's very unlikely we'd be able to roll in this bond that goes up in four years. And if we were, you're still talking about 40 years of pain and debt for a project. Now, again, we need to talk about it. But before we tell everybody we can just roll this bond over, that's very unlikely from our bond lawyer. Very unlikely. Thank you. Um, that concludes the time we have allowed for questioning. We will now give each candidate a two-minute closing remark time, uh, beginning with Ms. Thomas, then Ms. Newquist, Mr. LaFlex, and Mr. Graciano. Two minutes each. Um, in closing, I. You know, I just feel that um, as a community, we are all invested um, in Three Oaks. Um, as a community, we all need to work together to keep our Three Oaks the way we want to keep it. Um, I, I love working here, and I love being here, and um, I love this being my chosen home. And that's sweet and simple. I just want to thank all of you for coming out here tonight. I have to say this has been kind of nerve-wracking. I've never done anything like this before. But I love that it feels like a conversation. So even though your questions were written down, I, I love the back and forth, and I really want to continue that. And that is really what I will do as a council member, is encourage full participation and give full representation. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank everyone for coming this evening. Um, it's great to be in a room full of all of our community members. Um, I would like to close with, um, as, as someone who knows what it takes to get the job done, um, I've overseen multi-million dollar projects. Um, I'm a little bit frustrated with the I can't and this won't work. Um, that's why we pay a village manager. That's why we have a council because these people are elected to figure it out and find the answers for us and get the job done. Um, that's why I have stepped up because I intend to do that. Um, so thank you for coming tonight and that's where I'm going to leave it. And finally, Mr. Graziano. I just want to also say, I thank everybody for coming here. Uh, this is democracy, and it's nice to have a conversation. I had fortunate to learn from the best. Mr. Gentleman in the back, I know, Mr. Palin is my government teacher, and that's why I became a teacher also. And I, for 21 years now, I've been a history government teacher. And, uh, this is great. This is what it's all about. I want to thank you. I can promise if I'm re-elected, I'll represent all members of this community, including the business owners, second homeowners, and especially the core of this community, the residents. From the resident who just moved here to the homeowners who lived here their whole life, I will always be proud to call them, I will always be called, <laughs> let's start over again, I will always be proud to call myself an ogre, like I do every day. Thank you, and I hope you allow me to continue serving this place I love so much, three hours. Thank you. Sixth, and encourage all voters in the village to vote. In elections such as this, voter turnout is often abysmal. 
and a few voters make the decision for everyone. Don't let that happen this time. Thank you.